Hey everyone, welcome to the Grace and Truth broadcast. I'm Dwayne Sheriff, and I'm in a series that we have called God Killed My Old Man. And this is so important to the Christian faith, and yet so few seem to understand it or even heard about it. And yet you cannot walk in newness of life. You cannot rule and reign in this life over sin, over Satan, over your flesh, over the world if you don't know the death of your old man and that God crucified our old man that was united to Adam and a sin nature. Uh, he put him to death at the cross. And if you don't know that and that it was buried and that you've been raised anew, then you can't walk in this fullness of this newness of life even as a Christian. So the death of your old man is vital and the understanding of that as a part of the gospel, as a part of the power of the cross. When Paul talks about the power of the cross, he's talking about not just the death of Jesus, but the death of your old man. Not just the burial of Jesus, but the burial of your old man and not just the resurrection of Jesus, but His resurrection, if you study scriptures, is your justification. It's my justification. So we have a connection to the cross. We have a connection to Jesus and the gospel in which now it all starts with the death of the old man. My old man, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave Himself for me. That's Galatians 2.20, that I am, I was, I have been crucified with Christ, buried with Christ, and now raised to new life with Christ. And that's how you walk in the power of this new, this new life is a revelation. God revealing this to you and the reality of it. And so we've looked at many different scriptures already, but I want to look at chapter 5 of how Paul compares who we were in Adam and the effects of Adam and the old man versus who we are in Christ now and the effects of the new man in Christ. Then Paul, and we will get into Romans chapter 6 on how to be free from sin, how to walk free from sin. And then in Romans 7, he talks about marriage and he talks about how we were married to that old man. We were married to a sin nature, and the only freedom from it was death. And that the only way to get out of a marriage after the law was death. And God killed my old man. He crucified that old man with Christ, and that death, Romans chapter 7, says that it's what released me to be married to a new man. And that new man now is united to Christ. That new man is your born again man. That new man is this new born again spirit, this new creation that the Holy Spirit wants you to renew your mind to. And that as you renew your mind to it, your life will be transformed, I guarantee you. And so then we'll get into finally Romans chapter 8 where we are free from condemnation because of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Hallelujah. All right, let's go back down to Romans chapter 5 in these two men, an old man in Adam and now a new man that is in Christ. And the effects of, of both men are recorded in these passages. Um, we'll, we'll start in Romans chapter 5, verse 12. Just... Or therefore, just as through one man sin entered into the world, and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men, because all have sinned. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed where there is no law. Man, that is so powerful. It's so hard to, to cover too much too fast, but... It was Adam that brought all this death into the world. It was Adam that sinned, and we were all in Adam in the garden. And when he sinned, we sinned in Adam. When he fell, we fell. The whole human race was on the inside of this one man. If you trace your roots back far enough and you're honest, it'll go all the way back to the garden. We all came out of Adam. And so when Adam sinned, we sinned. And he's the one that brought all this death into the world all this poverty, all this corruption, 
not God. Adam introduced all of this sin into the world and we were all born into that sin. And so he goes on to say, while sin wasn't imputed where there was no law, nevertheless, verse 14, death reigned from Adam to Moses even over those who had not sinned according to the likeness of the transgression of Adam, who is a type of him who was to come. Adam was a type of him who was to come. Adam was a type of Jesus. Jesus is the one who would come. And Adam was a type of Jesus. And just like Adam was a, a covenant head of the human race, and we were all in him, and where he went, we went. And unfortunately, he went into sin and death and guilt and condemnation, and we went with him when he went there, and we were born into that condition. We were also in Jesus at the cross, and where he went, we went. When he died, we died. When he was buried, we were buried. When he was raised, we were raised. And when he was seated, we were seated. And now we're ruling and reigning through Christ. And that's what this goes on to say, and we'll look at here in just a few minutes. And so now he begins to compare, though, what the effects were being in Adam, the old man, versus the new effects and being in the new man, which now is united to Christ. He goes on to say then, but the free gift is not like the offense. The free gift was the gift of salvation. The offense was the sin that Adam committed in the garden. But the free gift is not like the offense. For if by one man's offense many died, much more the grace of God and the gift of grace of the man or the one man Jesus Christ abounded to many. And the gift is not like that which came through the one who sinned. For the judgment which came from one offense resulted in condemnation. But the free gift which came from many offenses resulted in justification. Verse 17, For if by one man's offense death reigned through one, the one, much more those who receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness will reign in life through one Jesus Christ. Therefore, as through one man's offense judgment came to all, resulting in condemnation, even so, through one man's righteous act, the free gift came to all men, resulting in justification of life. In other words, Adam's sin affected us all, but Jesus' righteousness has affected us all through faith. Adam sinned, and we're all born into that sin. We're all born sinners, not because we sinned, but because Adam sinned and we were in Adam and we were born into that sinful condition. And there's only one way to get out of that sinful condition. You got born into it through one man's offense. The only way out is to get born out through one man's obedience. That's Jesus Christ. Adam got us into sin through first birth and Jesus gets us out of sin through second birth. And that's what he says in the next verse that's powerful. For by as one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so also by one man's obedience many will be made righteous. Man, that needs to sink in for a minute. The scriptures teach we were made righteous, not, excuse me, I got it backwards already. I'm trying to get to the righteous first. The Bible says we were made sinners, not because we sinned, our personal sins, even though all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God, it wasn't your sins that made you by nature a sinner. It was your nature you were born in in Adam, a sinner, that drove you into sins. And it was one man that got you into this sin nature, your old man in Adam, and God killed that old man. He put that old man to death on the cross so that you now could be raised again, born again, a new man. And just like one man, and by one man's disobedience we were made sinners, now by one man's obedience, that's Jesus, we're made righteous. We got born into sin through one man's disobedience. You have to get out by being born again through one man's obedience. 
This is powerful, brothers and sisters, and this explains a lot, and it clears so much up when you begin to see that it wasn't your sins personally that made you a sinner. It was Adam's sin, and your old man by nature was a sinner, and that caused you to sin. God killed that old man. He put to death that old man. You were born again a new man, a new creation, a new person, and that new man, your spirit man, is righteous and truly holy. Just like it wasn't my personal sins that made me a sinner, it's not my personal holiness that makes me righteous. If I think my sins made me a sinner, then I'll think my good works will make me righteous. But if I understand I was a sinner by nature, and because of my nature I sinned, and I was born into it, now I know how to get out. I have to get born again. There has to be a death of that old man. He has to die, not dying. He has to be put to death by faith. We have to reckon ourselves dead to that old man, but alive now by faith in the new man, which is created in righteousness and true, and true holiness. That is so profound and powerful. And yet I guarantee you the majority of people watching me right now, many have not even heard what I just said. And that is the heart of the gospel. And others have heard but haven't comprehended, haven't understood the power of this, the revelation of this, and results of this in your life. You were sinning because you were a sinner by nature. Now you're made righteous by nature in your new man and you can put off sin now and have good works that come out of your new nature. Just like your sins came out of your old nature, your good works now come out of your new nature when you learn to be renewed in the spirit of your mind to the new man created in righteousness and true holiness. And so Paul goes on to explain this and how that we are now free from sin because of the death of that old, that old, that old man. In 2 Corinthians 5, 21, after Paul talks about the new creation and old things passing away and all things becoming new, that in your spirit, man, the part of you that got born again, the part of you that's sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise, the part of you that is righteous and truly holy, that part of you is a new creation and all things are of God in your spirit man. Your spirit man is united to Jesus. It, as, it is as the Lord in nature, in fruit. It is awesome. Your spirit man that's alive in Christ that is righteous and truly holy, brothers and sisters, it is powerful. It, it is something you have to be renewed to daily so that you put off this old outer man and put on this new man in your lifestyle. Put on this new man in your attitude. Put on this new man in your actions. And so after he talks about the new creation in 2 Corinthians 5, he says, and I like the King James Bible in this, uh, even better than the new King James. I like the new King James because it kind of helps us with the these and the thous and uh, all that kind of Elizabethan English. But sometimes... I don't know if it's because I was raised on the King James Bible. I just like certain scriptures. They're clearer to me in the King James. Uh, listen to the King James Bible of 2 Corinthians chapter 5. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. God the Father made Jesus sin with your sins and my sins. And why did he do that? So we could be made the righteousness of God now in him. Jesus was made sin on the cross without sinning. Once you understand that by revelation that Jesus bore your sins in his body on the cross. Uh, 1 Peter 2.24 says, Who himself bear our sins in his body on the cross, we being dead to sin, should live unto righteousness by whose stripes we're healed. Jesus was made sin who knew no sin. Whose sin was he made sin with? He was made sin with your sin and my sin. How much of our sin? All of our sin. 
Every sin you have or ever will commit, Jesus bore in his body on the tree and the punishment for it. And he did not sin to become sin on the cross. Once you see that, you know how that you can be made righteous without works. You'll never understand righteousness by faith if you don't understand God's, God's love for you and the gospel. The gospel is Jesus was made sin with your sin and died literally your death, buried that old man, and has raised you a new man, united to him now, married to him, in one accord with Jesus himself in your spirit man. And I was made sin by another man's sin, Adam's, and now I've been made righteous by another man's obedience, another man's righteousness. Jesus was made, Jesus was made sin with my sin without sinning. I've been made righteous. You've been made righteous with the righteousness of Jesus without works. It is no more a mystery or a miracle of you and me being made righteous, independent of our holiness, independent of our performance, independent of the law, independent of our works. That's no more of a mystery than Jesus being made sin without sinning. If Jesus can be made sin without sinning, I can be made righteous without works. And that is the effects of the cross. It's the power of the cross. It's the power of the gospel. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. For it is the power of God to save us, the Jew first and also the Gentile. And now, as the just, we live and walk by faith. This is important, brothers and sisters, that you see that your old man was crucified with him. It died. He died. He was buried. And now you've been raised a new man in Christ Jesus the Lord. All right, let's go over. We've got a little bit of time. And let's go over then into Romans chapter 6 and let's set this up for our next episode. Jesus is explaining in Romans chapter 5 that, hey, you were made a sinner by one man's disobedience. All this guilt and judgment and condemnation that came on us was because of Adam and being in Adam and that old man. Now, God killed that old man. He gave you a new man, and the new man is united to Jesus. And in that new man, you've been made righteous and truly holy. All of your sins have been forgiven. God is not imputing any sin against you, brothers and sisters. You are made the very righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And God remembers your sins no more. God doesn't impute your sin no more because of your faith in Jesus and the cross. And so as soon as you begin to share these things, and just like in Paul's day when he said these things, people thought you were saying sin doesn't matter, sin doesn't count, sin's okay. And so he transitions into chapter 6 on, again, the death of this old man and the purpose of God crucifying the old man wasn't so we could live any longer in sin. The purpose of God forgiving, of, forgiving us of our sins, remitting all of our sins, is so that we're no more and no longer a slave to sin. But now that we've been made righteous, let's do good works. Let's live holy lives. Just like in Adam, the old man, you were a sinner by nature, and because you were a sinner by nature, you did evil works. All your evil works came out of that old man and that old nature, and God's saying, I killed that guy. I killed your old man. I crucified him at the cross. I gave you a new man, a new spirit, and I put my spirit in you, and now I've forgiven you and released you from sin, not to live in it, but to walk free from it and to do good works. Just like out of your old sinful nature you did bad stuff, God wants you out of your new righteous nature to do good stuff. Boy, that, that should be comforting, brothers and sisters. And so Paul is dealing with this because a lot of times people will hear this grace. This is grace. It was by grace that God killed your old man. It wasn't anything you did. It was his favor in your life. It was his tender mercies. He killed your old man. It was God that made available a new man through simple faith. And so now he's balancing out what people think when you talk about how we're forgiven, when you talk about we're righteous without works, 
then, then people start thinking, well, are bad works okay? Should we just keep living in sin? I love the way this, this book opens in Romans chapter 6, verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? That statement came out of chapter 5, um, verse 20. I ended at verse 19, but let's go back real quick and look at verse 20. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. That as sin hath reigned unto death, that's through the old man, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ. That's the, that's the new man. And so people hear these things and immediately they think you're saying sin doesn't matter. It's okay to sin. And look at his response again. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? That is absolutely profound. How shall we, we that are a new creation, we that are born again with a righteous and truly nature, how shall we continue in sin that are dead to sin? That is incredible, that statement, dead to sin. Ephesians chapter 2 talks about how we were dead, verses 1 and 5, that when we were in Adam with a sin nature, we were dead in sins and trespasses. Colossians 2, 13 says that we were dead in sins and trespasses. Paul says here in Romans chapter 6 that now that the, de the old man is dead and gone and we're a new man in Christ, we are not dead any longer in sins and trespasses. We are dead to sins and trespasses. I love how verse 2 starts off, God forbid. God forbid. Look at it again, verse 3. God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Again, in Adam, the old man... We were dead in sins and trespasses, and God killed that man. He crucified that man on the cross and buried him. Now we're alive a new man, and we're not dead in sins and trespasses. We're dead to sin. We're now dead to sin, and that we should no longer live therein. But be honest, how many Christians do you know that are just as bound by the old sin and sins of their past as they were before they got born again. It's because they don't know this. It's because they don't realize the death of the old and the life of the new. And so we're going to pick this up in my next episode on being dead to sin and literally now how to overcome sin in our lives because that's God's will. He didn't save us to live in sin. He saved us from sin to live in Christ now and a holy life. And so we'll walk that out as well. Well, we're making a few things available free. I have a new series that's available um, called God Killed My Old Man. God Killed My Old Man. And it's four hours of teaching in a conference that I did on some of the things I'm sharing. And that's available on my website at pastorduane.com. It's a special offer, God Killed My Old Man. We also are offering the first two chapters absolutely free of my book called Identity Theft. And I cover many of these things in this book called Identity Theft, especially man, the old man in Adam and its effects versus the new man in Christ and its positive effects. There are many negative effects that the old man left behind. God killed him, but he left behind some bad habits and, and a carnal unrenewed mind. And we have to be renewed in the spirit of our mind. But man, Jesus has come to give you a new nature. Jesus has come to give us a new life. And the first two chapters we're making available absolutely free. You just need to email me at dsm, dsm at pastordwayne.com. And we'll make that link available for you to get the first two chapters of identity theft absolutely free. Also, you can call us at area code 580 Area code 580-4040-376. Area code 580-4040-DSM. That's 376 there. 
and there'll be a prayer partner available to pray with you, to help you navigate on how to get these things. We want to make them available as much as possible for free. We also have all kinds of messages relating to our identity available on my website, pastordwayne.com, and you can download those for free as well. Thank you to our financial partners. You make this broadcast possible. You make our free material possible. Hey, if you can give us love offerings, even in the free material, it helps us give away free material to people who can't afford it. So thanks for your love offerings. Thanks for your financial partnerships and supporting the broadcast. Man, it's exciting. We'd love to hear from you. The testimonies are, are encouraging. But thanks so much for watching. And remember, God killed your old man. It's easy to become overwhelmed in our fast-paced world, especially with the myriad of challenges we face. Yet too often we're overloaded because we pick up things God never intended us to carry. So how do we ease the load? In the book, Rhythms of Grace, Dwayne Sheriff calls you to follow the pace of God's guidance that will bring peace in chaos and strategies to sustain you in hardships. Following the calm rhythm of God's grace allows you to enjoy a supernatural peace. Let today be a fresh start to rest in the Father's arms. To order your copy of Rhythms of Grace, visit us online at pastordwayne.com or call us at 580-404-0376. Does God's voice seem distant in your life? In the book, Divine Guidance, Dwayne Sheriff demystifies the way God communicates and equips you to discern His voice amidst life's chaos. Hearing from God shouldn't be a strenuous task, but a natural, joy-filled communion. To order your copy of Divine Guidance, visit us online at pastordwayne.com or call us at 580-404-0376. In the devotional book, Blessing Your Children in Prayer and Faith, Dwayne Sheriff reveals the importance of praying for your children. Each topic contains a prayer and scriptures that impart God's blessings, unconditional love, affirmation, peace, and protection over them. To order your copy of Blessing Your Children in Prayer and Faith, visit us online at pastordwayne.com or call us at 580-404-0376. Thanks so much for watching. All of our content is available for free because of the generous donations from partners of Dwayne Sheriff Ministries. Visit our website, pastordwayne.com, to find the full message series and to learn how you can help partner with us. We hope you enjoyed this message.